Good evening, family. Welcome back for the season's finale of Miss Perfect, a ministry that strives to uplift and empower millennial women one mistake at a time. Today's guest is not only a member of my sister tribe, but a member of the community of grieving daughters. At just the tender age of five, Jocelyn Miller lost her dad to health challenges. In our episode, Growing Through Grief, we speak about the challenges yet victories of losing such a pivotal loved one at a young age, but how her dad's memory has allowed her to grow, heal, and impact the lives of others. We hope that this episode inspires you to take the journey of grieving. I'd also like to dedicate this episode to my dad, my hero, the late Lee A. Wilson. Check it out. Hello there, Jocelyn. Hi, Mel. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing today? Uh, fabulous. Blessed. Amen. That's a great way to be in, in despite the state of our world today and the COVID-19, but I'm excited to be back. Had to take a little hiatus to tend to some emotional needs, but this episode couldn't have come at a more befitting time, especially coming off the cusp of losing, losing one of my closest, closest best friends. So I'm super excited to have you today and to talk about a topic that is so important to me, grief. And I think that you are the perfect person to share this experience with, be it that we both are, as the world would say, fatherless daughters, if you will, both losing both of our parents at such impressionable ages. So I'm so excited to have this dialogue with you because so many people don't want to talk about it. Absolutely. I'm very grateful that you have called on me to be a part of this episode. <laughs> um, it's something that I don't talk about often. And I am grateful for the father figure I do have in my life, but I would be remiss to say that it's hard not having your biological father growing up in such a pivotal time of your life. So absolutely, absolutely. So I'm excited yeah. to tackle this. So um, I like on every episode, ask my guest, you know, it's 2020, it's a new decade, it's a new year. Uh, this year kind of started off quite interesting, but amidst <laughs> every, literally amidst everything that we're going through, um, what has been the most exciting thing about 2020 for you and what are you looking most forward to? So before 2020 started, I just decided that this year was going to be my year to see what's in store. And C for me is an acronym. I'm ready to save elevate my status in life and just explore what God has in store for me. So I am seeing 2020 clearly for all it's worth through its ups and its downs. All I can say is I've learned more this year about myself, about the people I keep around me, about what I'm here to do. And I'm just so excited for the rest of the year. And I'm more so waiting and anticipating for this COVID-19 to <sighs> heal. <laughs> run along. People, like, go on, go go on. on. Go Whatever on. word you want to use. Ready for go it to on. Be <laughs> <laughs> yes, and go on, please. At least to heal from it. So yeah, 2020, it hasn't defeated us yet. And we're going to come back stronger and better and renewed. I'm believing yeah. it. I'm speaking it. <laughs> Amen. I'm claiming it with you. Amen. So, um, in your own words, what is grief? Let's see. In my words, grief is a time that you need to take to understand what has happened. I'm a big believer in you can grieve from things that go beyond death. So maybe just a broken relationship, a friendship, um, a death of a family member, a death of a friend, a, you lost your job, something. You have to give yourself time to understand what has happened and then also make a plan to get through that. My motto for everything is tighten up and that doesn't mean forget about what has happened. It's know what's happened and see what you're going to do with it and see how it's going to affect your next move and make sure that it doesn't take over what your original plan was 
And that's all ultimately to be great and live by God. So that's, that's my version of grief. Amen. I like it. I've never really heard it broken down like that. But because you have experienced your first level of loss, as you will, as a five-year-old, you know, you basically have lived your majority of your entire life without your father being physically present. What has that been like for you? Well, like you said, I lost my father at five, five and a half. Um, it wasn't just me. I have a twin sister, a brother at the time, just one brother at the time and um, older twin sisters. And then I have some half brothers as well. We all lost our father. And for me, I was the youngest. I was daddy's girl. It was, I didn't process what had happened until I turned about maybe 10 or 12 years old is when I started to realize, wait, I need someone who understands me, who needs to show me the ropes, like what, what should I expect from men? You know, who's going to love me, whatever. Um, and I would say it just kind of shifted my mindset. I went into a dark place for a little while. I have a stepfather who is amazing. I'm very grateful for him, but our relationship was rocky at best. Um, and I think that was mostly because I never took the time to heal from not understanding what a biological father figure was supposed to be like in my life. And I often compared how, what was going on in my household to someone else's household who had both of their biological parents. And I just wasn't understanding the role of a father. So when it wasn't there, I just took it very poorly and didn't handle the situation well. So I was, angry if we if we right. think about the steps of grief right. i was angry for longer than i should have been and i think that was because of all the changes that were going on so when you lose a parent other things tend to happen as well you might have to move you might have to take on some more responsibilities grow up as you will and I just, as a child, I wasn't ready to do that. And I fought and kicked it every step of the way. Right. And, and when, you meant, when you mentioned that, it kind of took me on a time warp because I lost my dad when I was 17. So I'm kind of like the opposite of you. Like I grew up in a nuclear household. I remember riding my bike with my dad. My dad teaching me how to drive. It was bad because I crashed his car. But, you know, like little things like that, like, and then when he passed, a lot happened after that, like transition and, and, and things of that sort. So uh, my next question is like, how have you been able to adapt to those milestones existing, like prom, graduation, learning how to drive a car without your dad being physically there? Because to me, that's what makes me remember. Like, I think you kind of get an idea of like, oh, when you're relative past and it's been like five years so it's like it's not that I forget my dad but it's just like I, it's the new normal if you will so you learn yeah. how to readjust so how is readjusting to those milestones been impactful to you so um one of the things that I did is it is well losing my father what it did to me is it threw me into a independent mindset I just became very self-sufficient and I'm saying that just on a, emotionally, if I had to deal with something emotionally, it was all internal. I was going to deal with it. I never sought out outside stability from, be it my mom, my twin. So I was very independent when it came to milestones. Um, prom, homecoming, I never put like, the pressure on myself to think I'm without my father during this time. I just downplayed the actual event. So prom was just a dance. Homecoming was just a night out. Um, birthday parties, learning how to drive was just what it was. It wasn't something like over the top spectacular. Yeah. Um, although, Although I had someone, 
I have someone in my life who was there, but because of my own internal battle with the grief and just how that affected me, I was not appreciative of it. And it just, it never, it never outweighed the pressure I had already put on myself to just block everything out. So I just, those life events, I would say up until college were just another day, Mm -hmm. honestly. Wow. So you really compartmentalized your feelings. And that's what a lot of us do. Like, instead of saying, and we live in a society of, oh, instead of saying, ouch, when something hurts, you kind of just act like it doesn't bother you. And then you kind of have a breakdown. Like, I was dating a guy when my dad passed away. So I really didn't have to feel any emotion or anything. And he previously lost his dad the year before. So we were able to relate. But when that relationship perished, I was left having to deal with this bag of not knowing what it was like to live my dad. I never had to live life without my father. So some of my daily coping methods were like maybe reading a devotional. And then it's kind of weird because I grew up in a church. So it's like I had a relationship with God, but not to say it was a forced relationship because my parents were actively involved in church, but to a certain extent it was. But now some of my daily practices, if I find myself being stressed, is journaling or reading my Bible or watching reruns of Real Housewives of Atlanta. So <laughs> what is what is some of your daily practices for coping with grief? Daily practices for coping. Hmm. Let me think about that. I would say in the past my coping mechanisms quiet to myself or it was the opposite I'm letting it all out everybody sit down I got something to say (laughs) we didn't handle this well kind of like now right (laughs) kind of like now I had a lot to say (laughs) I talk out my emotions I will sit on them for a day And then if someone triggers something in me to let them out, it's all coming out. Tears, everything. And once I've let it out, whether the situation was resolved or not, I'm just stacking it up again. Because most of the time, the situation really didn't get resolved. My parents were really good at listening to my verbal attacks. But (laughs) (laughs) they were great at listening to it. But remember I have a lot of other siblings and if I'm the only one complaining about it I mean is it that bad but then again that was because I didn't have your traditional your traditional I guess upbringing upbringing to say hey you're grieving through this go to a devotional or something like that now granted I I was I was raised in the church I love the Lord. I've accepted him as my Lord and Savior. Okay, girl. I know where you're going. Where and you he go, is here for me. <laughs> but everyone in my family ha- has handled grief differently. And so it was never a community type of situation. One, per- It was one extreme or another. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I was very vocal with it. Or I just went silent. Or I just compartmentalized it and pretend it never happened. Um, now, though... I'm telling you, I will turn on some gospel music, let it out if I need to. I will read a read a quote that says, you know, be strong, tighten up. My biggest thing is tighten up, Jocelyn. Like, take this emotion and turn it into something positive. Do not sit on that emotion that is bringing you down and stopping you from your purpose. Oh my gosh, I tell myself that every day. I tell my friends that. I probably told you that. Tighten up now. You already you know. Have. And I don't we like it because I like through. to bask. I like to bask. I, Give me about two days. You love I like to, to bask. And I'm just like, it's, and there's power in basking in it. I feel like you can honestly start to underself, understand yourself better when you allow yourself to feel those emotions. But because I am so emotional, I have just told myself, girl, Feel it for a second, tighten up, let it go, move forward. And I'm getting stronger because 
I yes, I lost my father at a young age, but I couldn't even imagine losing him at 17 or 18 or 20, 21, once I've lived and developed so many memories and then had to lose like a diary. Whereas in my head, I have five-year-old magical memories of my father, you know? So I can always hold on to those. I can make up whatever picture, image, vision in my head and he can be that without anyone being able to stop my ideologies, you know, and right. that's what it's going to be. Whereas I'd like to kind of know from your perspective, wh- how, how is my coping mechanisms, how would that not work or maybe work with your situation? Well, it's interesting that you say that because I was going to ask you, like you mentioned community and like that stuck with me the most because obviously I, I'm relying on my community or my village because here I am five years later having to start all the way over with the grieving process. Um, I don't really think it's a matter of, of what works for one and what doesn't work for the other, because a lot, like you mentioned, everyone's coping mechanism is different. Like for me, um, it's kind of like your family. That's not something that we talk about. Like we might memorialize my father at like on a death anniversary or birthday, but a lot of those moments are kind of within myself or with a counselor because I attended a grief counselor. My mom has always put us in counseling. I can go back as early as being six years old, being at a therapist's house on the 13th Avenue of downtown Birmingham. I remember that. Um, And so how I cope is, like I mentioned, I have a strong relationship with God. You know that. So I like to bask in it, but I already know where my health and my strength is coming from. So it's like, girl, I know. I know I can pray about it, but can I be <laughs> sad right now? Like, I want to cry. Can I cry? Yeah. But um, like to answer your question, like having a community is how I cope. Like I have you, I have Nisha, I have my other line sisters that I, Nadira, Jordan that I can call and say I'm having a day because we all have lost someone so important to us at a certain period of life whether it be at the tender age of five or shoot legally about to be an adult um so having a community praying fervently you know sometimes I don't even have the strength to pray because I'm just so emotional but I think God is truly gets the glory out of your life when you give him authenticity Like, you don't have to have a colloquialism of prayers and declarations and scriptures and things of that to stand on. Like, God just wants you. He wants your heart. And if I can take to God and say, God, I'm heartbroken. Like, I'm missing my dad like crazy today. Or, God, why did you take my friend? Why didn't you heal her? You have the power to heal people. You've healed people of leprosy. You get restored sight to the blind. Why did you not give my friend a second chance at life to beat cancer at 22? So, having a community is important. That's if anyone says they get through heartbreak to this magnitude alone, they're lying. And I'm just going to put it at that. But community is everything, Jocelyn. You're a part of my community. I'm a part of your community. And, and we have this conversation all the time about you can only go to certain things, certain friends for certain things. And I remember I fell out with a girl who was my best friend in high school because she was not there. I think she might have attended my father's funeral. I really don't remember her being there. Um, but I kind of come back now and I'm thinking maybe I didn't teach her how to be there for me as it related to this because I'm the only one in my friend group with the exception of my other best friend who's lost a parent at a young age. How has having a community to get you through those periods of, of coping been beneficial for you? Um, do you have a community of people you can rely on if you're having some heartache days? say my community is there whether or not I utilize my community might be my own internal battle because when you mentioned um counseling my mother love her she put us in counseling after the death of our father that is great worked for my siblings I think we haven't really talked about it but for me, it was traumatizing. Um, what? Not, I would be honest with you, like, 
forced talking about something that I didn't understand at five and a half was weird for me. Cause I'm like, no, he's not like, what are you even, why are you telling me to feel this way? And I don't feel it yet. Um, so I wasn't receptive to it. And <laughs> they used to make us do like story times and everything <laughs> and dealing with anger. And I'm just like, I don't have no problems, okay? Like, it was almost like, what do you want from me? But then I got to 10, 12, 13, started realizing I have something to say. And then I was like, man, I'm not communicating with myself, nor my family, my community, the people who I know would be there if I knew how to put my emotions into words, but I didn't know how to do that so it always came out in anger and blame and fault and rah rah so whenever I could find something to just do for myself that is when I could start to lay things out and understand so even now my community is great but I don't like putting the pressure of trying to map out what's going on in my head onto them because then I start to expect things that they, that they are not supposed to be able to give me. And I understand that, so I just don't do it. When I come to them, it's usually like, girl, I had a, or girl, guy, whatever, I had a bad day, but let me tell you what I did to get over that bad day, and then now I'm here with you to talk about all the good of that day. So, because, I mean, I can call to somebody and vent, 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 vent for hours, but they're at the end of that vent session, they're going to look at me like, now what am I supposed to do? Because I have no idea yeah. where you're coming from. And then I'm going to be like, okay, well now I got to go still figure it out. When I could have just figured it out, came to them and been like, let me tell you what happened when I did this situation and how maybe it can help you if you're ever going through that situation. But this is actually what I need from you. I need you now to just let's have fun. Let's do something else. Um, and that's just, that just comes from my independent nature of, I don't want, I, opinions are beautiful, but, but they're, they're sad. <laughs> but they're just they're sad. Just sad. <laughs> Took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> they're just, just sad. sad. Like, unfortunately, Unfortunately, they're just that. And you know, you raise a good point because, and like, that's another conversation for another day, like knowing the woes for your friends. Because the old me, you know, I, I could not appreciate her absence. But the old me, I mean, the new me is kind of like, I could not have needed her to be absent much more than I need it now. Because a lot of the times we put our feelings and our emotions in the hands of other people. And then when they mishandle it, it's like a you thing. But it's like, no, it's a me thing. Because if I didn't put that type of expectation on you to deal with my junk. Because it took me a long time to mourn my dad's loss. Like, probably, like, this year when I was on my own in Charlotte. This is the first time I had ever been by myself. So to live 22 years kind of with other people and then having to be here alone, it's just different. But to wrap up this great dialogue, um, if you could provide consolation to anyone who's trying to figure out how to grow through grief, you know, whether it's a mom losing her child to a girl who just still hasn't dealt with the passing of her father or her mother, what would you tell them? I would have to say, give yourself the time to understand it for yourself. Mm. The more you just straight start letting people tell you how you're supposed to feel, you, you are losing yourself in that grief. When really you might be stronger than you think. Grief does not look one certain way. If you are a type of person who doesn't cry to show grief, do not let anybody pressure you into feeling like you have to cry to show grief. Truly allow yourself to be alone in it if you can in a safe way. And then come to people with a clear mind of this is what I need from you. And also go to the people 
who are authentically and effectively going to be there for you. Your best friend in the whole world may not be emotionally equipped to handle whatever emotions you're going through if she truly doesn't understand and that does not make her or him a good friend, a bad friend. It just simply means that at this point in your life, you need something else and that is okay. That is okay. And I believe you don't have to burn a bridge at all when you're right. working on you because God, he, he loves what he's doing with the road that he's created with us. And you don't know who <laughs> you're, you don't know who you're going to bump back into. So just have, have a principle that you're going to live by and be okay when you have to adjust and evolve and explore and save and see what is available for you. I love that. This was great. I'm so <laughs> thankful that you took this journey with me. I don't think this, I know this is my first time publicly speaking about grief and I can talk about it for days. Uh, and I know as you as well. So I'm super grateful for this opportunity and I thank you for your time. Um, I think it's only befitting that we conclude with the prayers. So I won't make you leave the prayer. I guess I can do the prayer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dear most gracious and eternal father, we come to you today just to say thank you. Thank you, God, for who you are and whose we are in you. God, we lift up every individual who has taken the time to not only consume the media from this interview, but who's definitely going through a tragic loss uh, right now, obviously in the midst of our, our country and so many people are vastly impacted by what the COVID has produced and that has produced a lot of deaths, but so many people are having to grieve alone. So God, I just ask that right now you comfort their hearts and their minds and their spirits and that you arrest them and let them know, God, that you are there and that you are a comforter to the brokenhearted as your word ensures us that we can always cast our cares upon you because you truly are concerned. We ask for strength. We ask for comfort. We ask for peace for not only right now for the, the loss is so fresh, but for the years to come, because as we know, the grief is a tricky thing and that it can impact our lives no matter when or how long that death has existed. We give you all the praise we give you all the glory and the honor for who you are and whose we are in you we ask it all in the powerful matchless name of jesus christ amen thank amen. you thank you melody thank you so much for watching and listening if you've never accepted christ as your lord and savior you can today to learn more about this important relationship or to even request prayer contact us at wytv7.org there are no prerequisites or requests for joining. All you have to do is simply believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins and he was buried and raised from the dead. If you need forgiveness, simply ask and it's yours for the taking. Once you've done that, congratulations, you are now a member of the body of Christ. Now, attend a Bible-believing church, study his word, and practice it daily. Congratulations and welcome to the kingdom of God.